when there is something that God wants you to hear, the enemy is always trying to interfere. Praise the Lord, everybody. I said you can tell when there's something that God wants you to hear because the enemy is always trying to interfere. Number one, do you think the devil wanted you to hear that woman of God's testimony? And she's back again. The enemy didn't want you to hear that testimony that that woman of God gave. Because her testimony is about, he's, he's mad of the testimony. What, what did the Bible, what does the word of God say in the book of Revelation? It says, and they overcame him by what? Blessings to you, uh, brother, Master Minister Knox, good to see you. And they overcame him, who, him speaking in reference to the enemy of your soul. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. The enemy didn't want you to hear that woman of God's testimony tonight because that testimony is about to free somebody. That testimony is about to deliver somebody. Minister Askins, good to see you, man of God. Love you, sir. That testimony alone is about to free many people and deliver many people. Don't you? The devil didn't want you to hear that. The woman of God came on. She says, listen, you gave me a prophecy on last week. That was 100% accurate. And I remember that. I'm going to say it again. I know the devil's mad. I, I, I said I'm going to say it again because I know the devil's mad. Because somebody needs to hear it. I gave the woman of God a prophecy. And I remember her writing on Periscope. She says, man of God, everything you said to me tonight. That was last Friday. She says, everything you said to me tonight was 100% accurate. And because it was 100% accurate, she says, I am going to sow a $100 seed into your life. I'm going to tell it again because I know the devil's angry. That woman of God sold a $100 seed. She said, man of God, the next day I woke up to $1,000 in my bank account. Two or three days later, I woke up to another $1,000 in my bank account. I sold $100. And the Lord, my Carola Basikobosai, she says, I sold $100 and the Lord gave me a $2,000 return. I tell people, she says, you didn't even ask for a seed at that time. I just felt to honor you and sold into your life. Blessings to you, woman of God. She says, prophet, you didn't even ask for a seed. She says, I just felt as though I needed to honor you and I did. And she sold $100 and received a $2,000 return within four days. I tell people all the time, and I'm going to repeat this again because the devil don't want you to hear this again, but I'm going to say it again anyway. When you release in your hand what belongs to somebody else, then God will command somebody else to release into your hands what belongs to you. If God commands me to give something and I don't give it, then there's somebody else that God is about to command to give to me that he will not command to give to me until I release what, I, what it is I have for you. That woman of God just obeyed the spirit of the Lord, not knowing, listen to this now, not knowing that the $100 that she sold had a $2,000 return wrapped up in it. Y'all ain't listening, y'all. See, everybody is focused on the seed, but you never think about the harvest that the seed is about to give birth to. Had that woman not released the 100, she would not have ever seen the 2,000 because the 2,000 was wrapped up in the 100. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all ain't saying nothing. The 2,000, was wrapped up in the 100. And when she released the 100, then God released the 2,000. Had she never released the 100, God would have never released the 1,000. Some of you all got releases out there that will never come because you haven't released. Lift your hands up and tell yourself, say, when I release, he'll release. Yo. I feel glory already. I said, lift up your hands and tell yourself, not your neighbor, but yourself, when I release, he releases. 
Oh, God. Mm. Listen, I'm not going to be here long. That's it, Sister Ida. Lift up your hands, everybody. Lift up your hands and tell yourself, when I release, he will release. I gave that woman of God a prophecy on last week. As a matter of fact, it was about maybe three or four. And she said, man of God, everything you've said tonight was 100% accurate. And because your prophecy has been 100% accurate, I'm going to release a I'm going to release a hundred dollar seed. She released a hundred dollar seed and got a two thousand dollar harvest because the two thousand was wrapped up in the one hundred. And had she never released the one hundred, she would have never seen the two thousand. Y'all, y'all ain't saying nothing. No, he ain't no joke. No, he's not. No, he's not. Listen, right before I get into the word of the Lord concerning your life tonight. Listen, I want you to know that the wind is blowing in your favor. Minister Knox says, I feel the Holy Ghost moving right now. I said, I want you to have an understanding, Sister Talia, that the wind is blowing in your favor. That's what the Lord told me to tell you tonight. Now, before I get into the word of the Lord tonight, I want to share something with you tonight that literally blew my socks off. This is a testimony coming from a woman of God, and I don't even know if she's here tonight. She was on last Friday. Um, I don't know if she's here tonight, but even if she's not, I want to share her testimony. She begins by saying, the woman of God's name is Lori, and of course you all do know that I do not give last names uh, because of the, uh, of the sake of privacy. Minister Askins, good to see you on tonight, man. Love you with my spirit. Bless God for you and your family. The woman of God's testimony that I want to give, her name is Lori. She begins by saying, good morning, sir. I hope all is well. She says, I catch your replays on Saturday morning. Evidently something is going on whereby she cannot catch them on Friday night or catch the live Periscope cast on, on Friday night. So she says in her email to me, she says, I catch your replays on Saturday morning. And on Friday night, this was last Friday night. Oh, she's here. She says, I'm here. There she is. Blessings to you, woman of God. Good to see you. See, I, I'm, I'm so glad when these people show up, these people in whose testimonies are given, because I want people to know that I'm just not making stuff up about fictitious people. You know, I want you to have an understanding that I'm not just making stuff up about people who have no substance and who have no breath. I am tell I am talking to you about real, live, walking, breathing, seeing, hearing people. And I'm so glad that she's here tonight. Blessings to you. Good to see you. She says, I catch your your replays on Saturday mornings. And on Friday night, you said that you saw someone receiving $350,000. If you remember that prophecy that I gave, uh, type in a number one very quickly, quickly so that I can move on. I gave a prophecy on, uh, on last week and I literally spewed out of my mouth. I said, the Lord just showed me someone receiving $350,000. I do not know who you are, but in the spirit, there is a case pending and I saw $350,000. She says, I catch your replays on Saturday mornings and on Friday night, you said that you saw someone receiving $350,000. Now, if you didn't hear me say that, don't say you did, all right? If you heard me say it, type in a number one. If you didn't, don't type it. It's all right and it's all good. Go back and listen to the scope from, from last Friday and you'll hear me say it for real. She says, I catch your replays on Saturday mornings. And, and on Friday night, you said that you saw someone receiving $350,000. And when I looked at the text, listen to this now. And when I looked at the text, I received from my attorney a couple of months ago, he communicated that he was demanding 
$350,000 concerning my case. Somebody lift up your hands and say, God is real with this. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. I, I gave a prophecy last week that I saw someone receiving $350,000. I said, I do not know who you are, but I saw someone in the spirit receiving $350,000. She says, when I heard your replay on Saturday morning, I read the text that I received from my attorney a couple of months ago and he communicated that he was demanding not 150,000, not 275,000, not 365,000, but he was demanding $350,000 concerning my case. The same figure that you said you saw in the spirit that someone was receiving. I feel glory right now. And listen to this now. She sent me the text from her attorney because she wanted me to know that she was telling the truth because I have no idea who this woman is. I have never seen her before. I have never talked with her before. Didn't even know that she existed before last Friday. She sent me the text personally to my email. She sent me the text from her attorney in which I am not unable to voice due to the fact that the case is still pending and have not yet been consummated. But in the text, it stipulates that they wanted to award Lori, who's here tonight, they wanted to award her $100,000, but her lawyer said no. Her attorney said no. We are demanding $350,000. She said, man of God, the very same amount that you saw being received by someone in the spirit on last Friday. I decree and declare that in spite of they wanting to give her, settle with her, for $100,000. Somebody lift up their hands and say, I know that's right. I decree and declare that you're about to get favor. And I see $350,000 walking into your living room. Lift up your hands and tell them thank you. I said, lift up your hands. See, because here's the deal. I saw it happening before I even knew it was being asked for. Are y'all with me? She was the only woman. I said, I saw it happening even before I knew that it was being asked for. The Lord showed me on last Friday somebody becoming a recipient of $350,000. They wanted to settle with her for $100,000. Her lawyer said, no, we're demanding $350,000 and they shall receive what he's demanding. The winds of favor. Oh, that looks good. I like that. That $350,000, that looks, you know, it looks better. It looks better when you write it other than when you say it. When you say it, it doesn't sound like a whole lot. But when you put it on the screen, that looks nice. Somebody put $350,000 up there. That looks real nice. Here's what I want you to do. Here's what I want you to do. 
God says, I brought about the foolish things to confound the wise, the weak things to confound the things that are mighty. I want you to write a check to yourself tonight and keep it with you everywhere you go. Write a check to yourself tonight. Whatever you are believing God to do for you tonight. I know that this sounds foolish to some people. You know, some people are listening to this and they say, man, is this, you know, is, is this guy for real? Is, is he really for real? Are these people really wasting their time listening to what this man has to say? Listen, I want you to write a check tonight. Are y'all listening to me? I want you to write a check tonight. Keep it in your back pocket. Keep it in your back pocket. Keep it in your wallet. Keep it in your purse. Keep it in your pocketbook. Keep it on your nightstand. Keep it in your Bible. Keep it somewhere. Tape it to your refrigerator. Tape it to your mirror in the bathroom. I want you to write a check of what you are believing God to do for you by faith. And watch what God is about to do. Some of you all, I'm telling you with what God is about to do, some of you all are about to be stunned beyond belief. Somebody says, what if I don't have a check? Make one. Make one. Make a makeshift check. Tell yourself off a loose leaf. You know how a check looks, don't you? Tell yourself off a piece of loose leaf paper and make it look like a check. My God, I feel glory now. Tell yourself off a piece of loose leaf paper. I said, tell yourself, tell yourself off a piece of loose leaf paper and make it look like a check. My God, I feel this thing right now. And write what you are believing God for by faith. Are you with me? Write, I'm going to say it again, write what you are believing God for by faith. Write what you are believing God for by faith. And listen, let God lead your spirit. I'm going to say something right now because something, as I was talking to you, something entered into my spirit. I, I could have wrote down two million. I could have wrote down five million. I could have wrote down three million. I could have wrote down 22 billion, but there was a number that entered into my spirit and it was $180,000. The Lord just said to me, now that ain't for you, that's for me. The Lord just said to me, he said, son, I want you to write a check out to yourself for a hundred and eighty thousand dollars and watch me and watch me do it for you. See, I, I could have put down two million just to say something. I could have put down two billion just to seem big. I could have put down six trillion, but there was a spirit as I was talking to you. There was a figure that entered into my spirit of 180,000. And the Lord said to me tonight, just now, he says, write a check out to yourself for $180,000 and watch me move on it. I believe God to do that for me tonight. I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't know when it's going to happen. I don't know who he's going to use to do it or what he's going to use. But by faith, I believe that God's about, about to put $100,000, 180000 in my hands. I want you to write a check out to yourself tonight. Keep it with you. Pin it up somewhere. But listen to me. Write it tonight. Write it tonight. Those of you who are not listening to this tonight, who will not catch this broadcast until tomorrow, you write it tomorrow. You're not obligated to write it tonight if you're not listening tonight. You are only, you better get this now because I'm not playing with this. You are only obligated to write this tonight if you are listening tonight. If you don't get it tonight, but you don't get it until Saturday, or you don't get it until Sunday, or you don't get it until Monday, you are obligated to write it when you hear it. 
If you hear it tonight, you are obligated to write it tonight. Listen to me. If you don't write it before the night is over, you've missed out. I'm on, I'm, listen, I'm going to write mine right now. I ain't wasting time. Y'all think I'm playing. I said, if you don't write it before the night is over, you have missed out. I'm writing mine right now. Y'all think, y'all think I'm playing with this. I ain't playing with this. I'm real with this. I, ain't got, I don't have time for the shenanigans. I'm writing this out to myself. See, I don't have a check handy. I don't know how long I'm going to be on the scope tonight, and now I won't miss it. So. I'm writing this out right now. Y'all think I'm playing. There's mine right there, $180,000 that I just wrote out to myself. Write the vision, make it plain, so that he that read it that may run with it. For the vision is yet for a point of time, but the end shall speak and not lie. Though tarry wait for it, vision shall come, so it shall surely come to pass. It will, it will surely come to pass. Write the vision. And for some of you all, there are figures entering into your spirit right now. So I'm here to prophetically minister to you. For some of you all, there are, there are figures entering into your spirit right now. Write what you hear in your spirit. The Lord just told me, I want you to write a check out to yourself for 180,000. I could have just said 100 and, 180 trillion just to make it sound real good in front of a bunch of believers. But in my spirit, I heard 180,000. I'm gonna write a check out to myself for $180,000 and then come back with a testimony that's gonna blow me and your mind. Because I'm believing God. Anybody believe God tonight? I said, anybody believe God tonight? Bless God for that woman of God sharing her testimony on tonight. Is she still here? The woman of God who shared, she says, I've been writing one million every, I've been writing one million on everything. Wow. She said, that's a confirmation because I've been writing one million on everything. That's that same woman of God that sold a hundred dollars last week and within three or four days. Within three or four days, the woman of God received $2,000. When you release what's in your hands that belongs to somebody else, God will command somebody else to release in their hands what belongs to you. Can I tell you tonight that somebody's got your blessing in their hands? Somebody's got your next miracle in their hands. Somebody's got your next door in their hands. When you release what's in your hands for somebody else, then God will command somebody else to release what's in their hands for you. Listen to me, listen to me, listen. Let me give this and I got to get out of here. Is that Sister Carolyn Simons out there? Blessings to you, man of God. Blessings to you, woman of God, rather. Sister Simons, blessings to you. I didn't see so many men tonight. Bless God for the men that are in the house tonight. Mm -hmm. Sister Simons, blessings to you. Blessings to you. And the favor of the Lord 
be upon you and your house and all that you do. The Lord told me to pray over you in your house tonight. And God told me to decree his favor upon you in all that you do. Someone says, I need to send you my testimony. Please send me your testimony because somebody else needs to hear it. Praise the Lord, everybody. She said, God did it. Yeah, you got to send it to me. I wish you would have sent it to me earlier so I could have given it tonight, see? But Sister Simons, I pray the favor of God upon you, ma'am. The Lord just told me to pray the favor, his favor upon your life tonight. And I pray the favor of God upon you and your family and all that you do. I come against the spirit of death in your household. I come against the spirit of suicide in your household. I come against that spirit of hopelessness in your household. I said I come against the spirit of death and I command the spirit of death to leave. I command the spirit of death to leave. I command the spirit of suicide to leave. Now, I command the spirit of hopelessness to leave now. I command the spirit of discouragement to leave now. I command the spirit of depression to leave now. I've got power and authority over the enemy. Yes, I do. See, I'm not, I, I am not afraid of the devil. And he knows I'm not afraid. I said, I'm not afraid of the devil. And he I said, I'm not afraid of the devil, and he knows I'm not. And I command the spirit of depression and discouragement and hopelessness in that household to flee tonight. I take authority over the spirit of suicide, and I command it to leave the house tonight. You foul spirit, go now. The Lord rebuke you. In Jesus' name. And God, right now, I thank you for peace that surpasses all understanding. I thank you for peace. I thank you for peace. I thank you for peace. Lift up your hands now, sister. Sister Simons, lift up your hands and thank God for the peace of God. Thank God for the peace of God that shall abide with you forever. From this day hence and forevermore. Lift up your hands and thank God for the peace of God. I say that shall abide with you forever from this day hence and forevermore. And God, we bless you now. Satan has no authority. Hallelujah. Listen, I'm going to say this and I've got to get up out of here. As I was praying about 5.46 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Somebody write 5.46 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Somebody write 5.46 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Sister Ida, there's a miracle coming to your house. 
And I've got to say something. I just saw something, but I know not what it means. I saw the number 21 in the spirit, but I do not know what it means. But I want you to write it down. There is a miracle, Sister Ida. There is a miracle. Man, I feel, listen, I feel the fire of God down within the crevices of my spirit. There is a miracle coming to your house. And, and, and when the Lord began to speak to me to tell you that there's a miracle coming to your house, I saw the number 21. I have no insight in relation to what the number 21 is all about. But I want you to write it down. I want you to write, my God, I feel something now. I want you to write it down. I want you to write it down. I have no idea. And I'm going to say it again. I'm going to keep, re I, I have no idea what the number 21 means. I'm going to say it again. I have no idea what the number 21 means. I'm going to say it again. I have no idea what the number 21 means. But when I heard that there was a miracle en route to your house, I saw the number 21. I have no idea what the number 21 means, but I know what I heard. There is a miracle on the way to your house that the devil desires to stop, but will not be able to. Lift up your hands and thank God right now. Hallelujah. 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 At anointed underscore flame. Who are you? What's your first name? At anointed underscore flame. Who are you? And what is your first name? The, at anointed underscore flame. Who are you? Who are you? And what is your first name? Because there is a prophetic. Your name is Natalie. Natalie, there is a prophetic gifting that resides on the inside of you that God is about to quicken. There's a prophetic gifting that relies upon the inside of you. Her name is Natalie. There's a prophetic gifting that resides upon the inside of you that God is about to quicken in this season. And I see you ministering to many. I also see music. I also see music. I also see music. When I when you said that my name is Natalie, I heard something concerning music. When you said that my name is Natalie, I heard something concerning music. When you said that my name is Natalie, I heard something concerning music. When you said that my name is Natalie, I heard something concerning music. God is about, she says, yes, I love to write music. Y'all still think God playing, don't y'all? Yes, you do, y'all. Y'all still, y'all still think God playing. When I heard, when I saw the name, when she wrote the name Natalie, I heard in my spirit something concerning music. Y'all think God playing. Minister Askins, they really, they don't, they don't believe, some of them still don't believe God yet. All of this accuracy where prophecy is concerned, some of them that are yet here still have problems in believing God as if I am just miraculously guessing at this. This is the Holy Ghost. When she said that her name was Natalie, I heard something concerning music and the woman of God writes on the Periscope screen, I love to write music. Isn't that the Holy Ghost? Woman of God, I want you to have an understanding that you're in a season 
where God is about to begin to open doors for you and connections that God's about to breathe upon you to take you to the next chapter where your living is concerned is here. Connections is, they are here. They, they are here. It is just a matter of time whereby God begins to expose you. The word of the Lord says that a man's gift shall make room for him and bring him before great men. A man's gift shall make room for you. Your gift is about to make room for you and bring you before great men. God is about to expose you and expose you in a good way. I'm not talking about negative exposure. I'm talking about exposure that's going to positively benefit you, that's going to financially bless you. You are about to be used by God in heights and on levels and, and depths whereby you had no idea. Watch what God does. Lift up your hand and tell the Lord, thank you. I said, lift up your hands tonight. I feel glory. I feel a new place in the Holy Ghost. Lift up your hands and tell the Lord, thank you. The Lord told me to tell you, for those of you in whom have been faithful with your money, he's about to do something supernatural with your increase. The Lord just told me to tell you, this is not for those of you who have not been faithful with your money. I'm sorry, I apologize. This is not for those of you who have not been faithful with your money, but for those of you in whom have been faithful with your money, the Lord told me to tell those of you in whom have been faithful with your money, he's about to do something supernatural with your increase. God, I'm gonna say it again. This is not for those of you who have not been faithful. Those of you who have not been faithful, you can't praise off of this. You can't dance off of this. You can't sing off of this. You can't shout off of this. But for those of you who have, my God from Zion, the Lord said, tell those who have been faithful with their money that I am about to do something supernatural where their increase is concerned supernatural increase my listen i received that for me my me and my house i re, supernatural increase is about to transpire for those who have been faithful to god with their money i'm gonna say it again i said supernatural increase is about to transpire for those Faithful to God with their money. Watch the increase. Watch the increase that begins to come to those of you who have been faithful with your money where God is concerned. Listen, I got to move on. Listen, I was praying about 5.46 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on this evening. Somebody write 5.46. 5.46. 5.46. I was praying about 5.46 Eastern Standard Time and I saw in the spirit as it was the earth's surface cracking and splitting and breaking. This was about this was about 5:46 p.m. this evening. 5:46 p.m. this evening. I was in my bedroom with my door closed. I was on my knees 5:46 p.m. and I was on my knees praying. 
at about 5.46 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I saw, as it were, in the spirit, the earth's surface cracking. I saw the ground cracking. I saw the ground splitting. I saw the ground breaking. And when I saw what I saw, when I saw what I saw, I said to the Lord, what is this? I saw the earth's surface cracking. I saw the earth's surface splitting. I saw the earth's surface breaking. And I said to the Lord, what is this? And I heard in the spirit, things are breaking open for you. Things are breaking open for you. Can I get everybody who's here tonight to type in things are breaking open for me? Say it that. Make it personal. Make it make it personal. I want you to type that. I want you to type things are breaking open for me. I was on my knees, Sister Simons, at about 5.46 p.m. I was on my knees and I was praying. And in the spirit, as I was praying, I saw as it were the earth's surface cracking and splitting and breaking. And I said to God, I said, Lord, what mean, what mean it this? What does this mean? And I heard the spirit say, things are breaking open for you. I Listen, I want you to personalize that tonight because that's for you. Not, not for your next door neighbor, not, not for your church member, not for your brother, not for your sister, not for your mother, not for your cousin. Not, that's for you. I, personalize it and put up things or break. As a matter of fact, out of your mouth, God, I feel this now. You ought to decree it tonight. Things are breaking open for me. Things are breaking open for me. And God said, people of God, that things are happening for them. Somebody says, this, this is October the 1st. There's only 90 days as of today. No, October the 2nd, right? This is October the 2nd. As of today, there is only 90 days left in the year. But I heard Solomon say, Prophet Wine, blessings to you, man of God. But I heard Solomon say, in the book of Ecclesiastes, better is the ending of a thing than the beginning thereof. I said, as of today, today is October the 2nd. And as of today, there are 90 days left in the new year. And just because there are 90 days there is somebody who's about to give up. There's somebody who's about to give in. There's somebody who's about to lay down. There's somebody who's about to quit. There's somebody who's about to die. There's somebody who's about to wave the white flag of surrender because there's only 90 days left in the year. And if he didn't do it for me in January, and if he didn't do it for me in February, and if he didn't do it for me in March, and if he didn't do it for me in April, and if he didn't do it for me in May, and if he didn't do it for me in June or July or August of September, what makes you think he's going to do it for me in the last 90 days? of the year. Better is the ending of a thing than the beginning thereof. See, everybody else is excited about the beginning of the year. I get excited glory right now about the ending of the year. Everybody gets excited about January 
February and March. But I get excited about October and November and December. While everybody else is getting excited about, about January and February and March, I get excited about October and November and December. Why? Because better is the ending of a thing. It's in the Holy Ghost. Because better I, I feel this thing in my spirit because I'm here to minister to somebody who's on the verge of giving up just because there's only 90 days left in the year of 2020. The Lord told me to tell you, better is the ending of a thing. Church with me than the beginning thereof. You mean to tell me they've got 90 days left in the year? God created creation in six days and rest on the seventh day. And if God created creation in six days, you don't think God can give you a miracle within 90? Y'all better stop playing. If, if God created creation within six days, you don't think God can heal you within 90? If God created creation within six days, you don't think God can give you a house within 90? If God created creation within six days, you don't think God can financially prosper you within 90? I decree and declare that if he created creation within six days, he can do anything within 90 days, y'all. Oh, I feel the glory of the Lord in this house tonight. I said, if he created creation within six days, God, I feel glory tonight. He can do anything within night. But the Lord said, the Lord said, he says, he says, tell the people that, that things are breaking open for them. I saw in the spirit, 5.46 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I saw in the spirit as it were the earth's surface cracking and splitting and, and breaking, Minister Purvis. And I said, Lord, what does this mean? And the Lord said, tell the people that things are breaking open for them. Tell the people that things are happening for them. Tell the people that things are changing all around them. Things that seem impossible for you. Things that seem insurmountable for you. Things that seem inaccessible for you. Things that seem impassable for you. Things that seem unimaginable for you. God in this season, you better hear me in the Holy Ghost, is about to make the impossible possible. He's about to make the inaccessible accessible. He's about to make the unimaginable imaginable. Things that you thought would never happen will happen. Things that you thought would never come to pass, the Lord told me to tell you shall come to pass. And I heard in my spirit, you better get this in the Holy Ghost. I heard in my spirit. Joshua chapter 6 verse 1. When the Lord began to minister to me. In my time of prayer and consecration. When God began to minister to me. And when God began to say to me. That things are breaking open for you. When I literally saw the earth's surface cracking and splitting and breaking. And the Lord said things are breaking open for you and things are, are, are about to begin to happen for you. I heard in my spirit as it were Joshua chapter 6 right about verse 1 where God says, where the word of God says rather, that now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. Israel was in a season of the insurmountable and the inaccessible and the impassable. 
because the walls of Jericho were insurmountable. They, they were too great for the children of Israel to overcome in their own strength. You better get this. The walls of Jericho were inaccessible. They, they were too out of reach for the children of Israel to move beyond in their own mind. The walls of Jericho were impassable. They, they were incapable of being passed by the children of Israel in their own power. They, they were dealing with something. Oh, God, I feel this right now. They were dealing with something in this season. They were dealing with something in this season where they needed God. They needed divine intervention. Somebody is dealing with something in this season that's impassable. Somebody is dealing with something in this season that's, that's inaccessible. Somebody is dealing with something in this season that's insurmountable. You are dealing with something that if you are going to have victory over it, God's going to have to get involved. They can do it in their own strength. They couldn't do it in their own mind. They couldn't do it in their own power. They needed divine intervention. Somebody said, you can't buy a prophecy, but you can definitely sow into one. I just sold $122. Blessings to you, woman of God. Listen, they they needed they needed divine intervention. The Lord began to minister to me, and I want you to hear this and get this by the Holy Ghost. God is about to move things out of your way. That's keeping you from going to your next level in this season. Let me say it again. I said God is about to move things out of your way. That's keeping you from going to the next level in your life. The walls of Jericho kept the children of Israel from going to the next level in their life. And, and get this in the Holy Ghost now, get this, get this, not just their next level, get this, the, the walls of, you got to get this in the Holy Ghost now. Hear me when I say this. this. I'm about to say something that only those who have ears to hear is going to receive. The walls of Jericho was not just keeping the children of Israel from going to their next level. Watch this now. Here it is. Here it is. But the walls of Jericho was keeping the children of Israel from going to their promised level. See, there, you know, it's one thing to go to your next level, but it's a whole new nother ball game when you're talking about your promised level. The walls of Jericho, you better get this in the spirit now. The walls of Jericho, this is only for those in whom have is to hear. The walls of Jericho was not just keeping them from going to their next level. The walls of Jericho was keeping the children of Israel from going to their promised level because if you read the text, God promised Jericho to Israel. I'm gonna say it again because some of y'all are missing it and you'll get it after the scope is over. I said the walls of Jericho was not just keeping them from going to their next level. 
the walls of Jericho was keeping them from going to their promised level because when you read the text, you'll discover that Jericho was promised to Israel. In Joshua chapter six, right about verse two, God says to Joshua, he says, see, I have given into thine hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. It was not just their next level. It was their promised level. But even in dealing with their promised level, there was something standing in the way. Can I tell you that God can promise you something and there could still be something insurmountable standing in the way between you and what God promised you? And in order for you to get it and lay hold to it, you're going to need divine intervention. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Huh? It was not just their next level. It was their promised level. But the walls of Jericho, Minister Purvis, was standing between them and what God had promised them. There was something that they needed divine intervention on if they were going to get, if God was going to do this. God to do it. They couldn't do it in their own strength. The walls of Jericho was not just standing between them and their next level. The walls of Jericho was standing between them and their promised level. There are things that are standing between you and what God has promised you that only God himself can move out of your way. And listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. I don't care what it is or for that fact who it is that's standing between you and not just your promised, your next level rather, but your promised level. I don't care who or what it is that's standing between you and your promised level, not just your next level, but, but your promised level, God is about to move it or them out of the way. When I saw what I saw, Somebody says, some of you all just listening, but they're taking this personal. When I saw what I saw in the spirit, the Lord said, tell the people tonight that nothing shall stand between them and what I have promised them in this, their next level season. Tell, tell them that nothing shall stand between them and what I have promised them in this their promised level season. I decree and declare, Stephanie, get ready. God's putting keys in your hand to a new home. I saw somebody by the name of Stephanie. The Lord told me to tell you to get ready. He's putting keys into your hand for a new home. I decree and declare that this is not just your next level 
season. I decree and declare that this is your promised level season. We, we, we've often heard people talk about next dimension. We, we've often heard people talk about next place. We've often heard people talk about next level. I decree and declare that this is not just your next level season. You ain't never heard it like this before. This is your promised level season. Not just your next level. This ain't, this ain't just your next level. This is your promised level. And nothing and nobody shall be able to stand between God and what he's promised you. Stephanie, get ready. I see keys in, being put in your hand to a new home. And I don't even know what this is about, but I see this uh, graphite blue looking automobile parked in your driveway. I'm talking to Stephanie now. Get ready. Where's Stephanie? Stephanie's still here. I see God putting keys into your hand for a new home. And I don't know if Stephanie is still there, but I don't even know what this is about. But I see, I see this graphite blue automobile parked in your driveway. Where's Stephanie? Is she still there? Is she still there? Ninety-one days as of today. Ninety-one days left in the new year. She's still there. I see, I, and I don't know what this is about, but I see this blue looking automobile. I have no idea what that's about, but I see this blue looking automobile in your driveway. I don't know what this is. It's, 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 it's a strange kind of blue. It's a strange kind of blue automobile parked in your driveway. This is your next level season. And the Lord told me to tell you that nothing shall stand between you and your promised level season. Listen, I want you, I want you to sow I want you to sow a nothing shall stand between me and my promised level seed of $29.99. I want you to go to the website www.prophetmitchell.org www.prophetmitchell.org or you can go to my cash app. Blessings to you, Lady Ida. You can go to the cash app, dollar sign Herm, H-E-R-E-M-M-I-T-C-H. And my, my Periscope secretary, Sister Ida, has placed that up on the screen. Cash app. Thank you, Sister Talia. It's dollar sign Herm, H-E-R-E-M, Mitch, M-I-T-C-H. Or you can go to the website, www.prophetmitchell.org. And I want you to sow in faith a nothing shall stand between me and my promised level seed of $29.99. Because I decree and I declare, I decree and declare, blessing to you, Pastor Pitts. Good to see you, man of God. I decree and declare 
that in this, your promise level season, nothing and nobody shall stand in a way. Minister Purvis, good to see you, man of God. Love you, sir. Love you, sir. I want you all to follow that man of God too, all right? Minister Purvis, I want you to follow that man of God. He is a, if I'm not mistaken, he is a degreed psychiatrist. Praise the Lord. He's an intelligent man of God. He's a man of God who has the heart of God. And I want you to follow that man of God because God is going to use him to be a blessing in your life. And I see a book that I want you all to invest into. There's a book that is going to write that I want you to invest in and that I want you to support. And God's going to bless you for doing, for having done so. Praise the Lord, everybody. I want you to sow. I want you to sow that tonight. I want you to sow a nothing shall stand between me and my promised level C of about $29.99. Go to the website, www.prophetmitchell.org. Or you can go to the website, dollar sign, Herm. Go to the parable. You can go to my uh, cash app, rather, dollar sign, Herm, H-E-R-M, Mitch, M-I-T-C-H. The woman of God that I told her I saw, I saw a blue car parked in her driveway. She said the Lord had been speaking to her about looking for a new automobile. And not that there's anything wrong with a used automobile. If you have to have one, but I decree and declare that there shall be a new automobile in your driveway because that's what I heard. I said nothing wrong with used automobiles. I've purchased used automobiles in the past. I've purchased used automobiles in the past. There's nothing wrong with them. But I heard there's about to be a brand new automobile parked in your driveway. There's someone else too. There's someone else. And you listen, you and this is for that person in whom I'm talking to. This ain't for everybody, but there's someone else who's believing God for a two-door red Mercedes, you need to sow a seed. I ain't going to even tell you what to sow, but you know who you know who I'm speaking to. This ain't for everybody. It ain't for 20 people. It ain't for 30 people. It ain't 40 people. It ain't for 100 people. It ain't for 350,000 people. It's for this person who's believing God for a two-door red Mercedes because I see, I see you pulling up with it in your driveway. You need to sow a seed for it. I ain't going to tell you what to sow. You need to sow a seed for it. Because I see you pulling up with a two-door red Mercedes. I'm not just, listen, I'm not just spitting stuff out just to spit stuff out because I don't have anything to do. I'm not just saying stuff because I don't have anything, that I don't have anything else to do. Uh, there is somebody that's about to pull up into the driveway with a two-door red Mercedes. You need to sow a seed for it before you do, because God's going to allow the deal to go a whole lot smoother than it would have had you not. You're pulling up and you're, you're going to pull, you're going to pull within the next three. Within the next, within the next three weeks, you are going to pull up in your driveway with a two-door red Mercedes 
and you're going to come back with a testimony. I'm, I'm, listen, I'm not telling you something that I'm trying to figure out. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not telling you something that I'm just throwing out there because within the next, you're going to come back with a testimony. You need to sow a seed because you're coming back with a testimony. I'm not spending a whole lot of time because God has said what he's had to say. Go to the website tonight, right now. Don't You ain't got to pray about it. You ain't got to think about it. You ain't got to fast about it. Go to the website right now, www.prophetmitchell.org. Or someone said, Sister Tracy says you can bank on the word. That's because she's seen many prophecies that I've given her come into fruition. And I mean stuff that she had no idea about. But yet God brought it to pass. Somebody says you spoke about me getting back in school in February. And I got back in August. Lift up your hands. I gave a prophecy in February about her getting back into school. And she says, man of God, I've been in school. I've got back in school in August. This thing is real. This thing is real. I'm, I'm not, listen, I'm not playing with this. I've got too many other things to do than to take time getting here on Periscope, messing around and playing with this because I'm bored. This is the Holy Ghost. You better get this and receive this because you're going to prosper by it and be blessed from it. Go to the website. I'm done because God has said what he's had to say. I'm done. Someone says you spoke about a geographical relocation and I recently moved to Houston, Texas from New Orleans. Do, do you all see these folk testifying here tonight? Do, do you all see people in whom I have spoken to or the Lord has used me to speak into their lives concerning something, testifying tonight, people that I have never met personally, people that I have never conversated with, that I have never communicated with, but God gave me a word for them. The woman of God said, you gave me a word, prophet, about geographical location, and I have since relocated from New Orleans to Houston, and God ain't done yet. Watch the miracle that's about to come because you obeyed. The Lord told me to tell you he's taking the stress out of your struggle. Watch what God is about to do. I'm talking to the woman of God who said, I relocated from New Orleans to Houston. Watch what's about to happen. Go to the website, www.prophetmitchell.org. Or you can go to the web, you can go to the, my cash app, dollar sign Herm, H E R M, Mitch, M I T C H. And I want you to sow. A nothing shall stand between me and my next promise level seed of $29.99. And I decree and I declare tonight that nothing. Shall stand in the way of what God is about to do for you. I love you all with my spirit, praying for you, interceding for you, bombarding heaven and your behalf, that the favor of God be upon you. The power of God move for you and the face of God shines bright upon you. Watch what God is about to do for you. Nothing. Nothing. Shall stand. Between you. And your promised level season not not your next level season 
but your promise level season. Watch God do it for you. I'm praying for you. Listen, I'm praying for you, but at the same time, rejoicing with you because I know what God is about to do for you. I'm going to say that again and I'm out of here. I said I'm praying for you while at the same time rejoicing with you because I know what God is about to do for you. Somebody ought to shout nothing shall stand between me and my promised level. Not, not just my next level, but, but my promised level. Because what God is about to do, he promised. And when God promises you something, there is nothing and nobody that can stand between it. There is no angel in heaven. There is no man on earth. And there is no devil in hell that will be able to stand between you and what God has promised you. Watch God do it for you. I'm out of here. I love you now. Bless you. Bye-bye.